blessings and welcome forward to reasonings right here at It's Real Life, yeah? Stay on the platforms to be informed and the platform is Celia Media on YouTube, IG and on Facebook. And you can also follow me, Jerome Sage Butler, on Facebook and Jerome Sage Butler on IG. So you can subscribe and like the videos and leave your comments. As a matter of fact, I've been loving the comments. I must say, there's been a tide in positive vibrations and I see that there is now an interaction of information and I love this interaction. So I'm thankful for all the I'm very thankful for all the people who have, you know, um, basically sent forward messages of support and just sharing how the information has helped them to reason a little bit clearer and even feel a little bit more of a stronger connection with divine. Right? So I'm very thankful about that. Today's presentation will be on pursuit of happiness. It's a very broad topic and there's many a literature written on it from age-old psychological um, texts to modern contemporaries writing about um, hedonism and lifestyles and well-being and all these states which are supposed to really make a person feel happy or feel happy with being alive. So the, 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 the ideology of the pursuit of happiness or pursuant of happiness is a grand tale told by many of observers, many of authors, many of artists. It's a grand tale of a human's drive towards, I would say, ultimate fulfillment. However, there is um, many versions to this pursuit of happiness and the way in which I envisage the pursuit of happiness becoming the manifestation of happiness is how you start out. And how you start out to me is the most important, not just a groundation or a foundation, it's a rooting, it's a seeding and a planting of all your deepest and truest concepts into a way of being. So is happiness an external experience we are trying to engender? Is it something we construct like the building blocks of the new apartment complex or the new amusement parks? Is it truly something that, is, that can be deconstructed and reconstructed at a moment's notice? Or is it a process of rooting, of grounding, of growing like none to the very process of nature? In my view of the pursuit and the fulfillment of happiness, one has to start out first with the most calmest, clearest, most subtle state of mind, devoid of as much judgment as possible. Why is this necessary? To engender something unconditional, to engender the watchers in yourself, to engender the observer in yourself, the one that does not automatically attaches oneself with all the states of human condition, both the states of going up, both the states of going down. Why is this necessary? This is necessary to be clear, to be so clear that one's experiences are understood separate and apart from one's nature. And when one's experiences are clearly defined as separate from one's nature, one can observe that with this non-judgmental state one can truly begin to love, appreciate and begin to see contrast and value in the objects and the subjects of our fascination. It is very important to have this watchers, this observer state of being non-judgmental, non-conditional, the undefined, I call it the undefined. This is very important in your pursuit of happiness. This state of being, when properly cultivated and inculcated in your habits and your behavior, will help you to first of all see experiences as they are, feel them and let them transition and let them go. One can then begin to have the power over experiences and hence happiness or the sense of the relation between our experiences begin to grow because the happiness isn't because of specific things but specific things are as a result of the happiness 
because of the state of being that you've now generated, you've now developed a way of processing your existence where judgments are lessened and value can be gleaned from each experience where you don't necessarily just identify with every buzz as being something good and every twinge as being something bad where you can observe the buzz ooh, and the twinge and see them experience them for what they are when one can truly see events as separate from the experiencer the witness then the whole cacophony of, exist of experiences begin to resonate and vibrate a wholesome meaning now you begin to understand a breath of fresh electrified electromagnetic air the prana of the holy spirit of being christ imbued in your aura and your being rising up your seven candlesticks your seven lights your seven chakras aligning now you can truly begin to experience and feel this divine this eternal rush of the subtleties which are truly happiness in experience in principle in action in behavior you can now begin to resonate it because you now begin to notice it is not because the beautiful girl has kissed you as a not so confident man and shown her love for you while happiness is so bubbling up inside of you it is because there's a state in you which allowed for her to see you not as you see yourself but as the true beauty you are that is why beauty is in the eyes of the beholder happiness is in tune and imbued in the presence of being it's not external so you can't go outwardly for it and you can't seek inwardly for it as a gold rush or as a treasure hunt it is a engendering principle of how you are free semi attached not completely detached semi attached to your experiences where you can see them where your psyche can process them for the value they transmute to you and you gleam from them so you can go through some of the most horrifying experiences and it not shake your happiness and it does not destroy your peace of being your peace of mind your joy in life because it wasn't impinged upon awesome experiences it is your nature unburden your nature and allow happiness to grow in you to truly see a butterfly for the true cosmic awesome it is and that awesome is the experience you are and to know what nature is so you can truly value the wife you have the children you have for the ladies to truly value the man in them life the husband in them life the experiences that pervade their consciousness and instead of looking for the man or the woman or the car or the house to give you that sense of fulfillment to fulfill you you begin to understand that fulfillment is the activity of understanding of being present in the process Rasta would say overstanding overstanding your presence in the process so if it's a donkey cart you're riding up the mountain take care of the donkey take care of the cart truly value the persons you see along your path value the environment then you begin to understand more of the virtues that happiness engender that grows in a happy being and then the pursuit of happiness will become the manifestation of a happy being of a cosmically free open and aligned being who can approach the loss of family loved ones 
friends are just fellow human beings who can experience it and yet continue without prejudice, without hatred, without hurt, beyond healing. They can continue and they can smile again, smiling even brighter. I've seen such people. I've known such people. I know my greatest wish in the grace of divine nature. I'm trying my utmost to be such people, to live my happiness. And in the beauty of fulfilling and, full, and being fulfilled in the pursuit of happiness, I'm reminding you to be fulfilled in the beauty that you are. Be satisfied in the awesome graciousness that is possessed in every action and activity that is possible within you. Truly resonate your happy being and know it to be yourself, to be more than just happy moments. I love happy moments, but remember, be a happy being and there will be endless happy moments to talk about and also endless sad moments that you'll forget. But the happy moments, the happy being, the happy presence, the presence of happiness will be your true fulfillment. I am Jerome Sage Butler reminding you that you are a true blessing unto yourself and unto your environment and to your living cosmos continue to be that happy genuine blessing that you are